Hello Bros, Machamp Strikes Again. This game stands as a shining example of the incredible impact Machamp can have when played to its fullest potential. Machamp's dominance was on full display, as it single-handedly took control of the game during the endgame, resulting in a swift and decisive victory. Before we delve into the thrilling climax, let's first explore the nuances of Machamp's laning phase. Laning with Machamp is a relatively straightforward affair, thanks to its remarkable burst damage capabilities, which can easily secure advantages for your team. To maximize Machamp's potential, positioning yourself aggressively on the enemy's side of the lane is crucial. This strategic positioning accelerates your stacking process and facilitates faster leveling. Hitting level 5 early in the game marks a significant turning point, elevating you to a more advanced player status. Seize this moment to harass the enemy and steal their farms through well-timed initiations. However, it's important to exercise discretion, as your success will depend on the specific opponents you encounter. Additionally, remain vigilant about the jungler's rotations during the early minutes of the game, as contemporary strategies often involve Mewtwo Y farming the red buff in the jungle and rotating early. This tactic aims to secure lane dominance in the early game, exploiting Mewtwo Y's rapid attacks and the crippling slow effect of the red buff. Upon reaching level 7, you face a pivotal choice between acquiring cross chop or close combat. In this particular game, the preference leaned towards close combat due to the prevalence of crowd control Pokemon on the opposing team. This strategic decision paid dividends as the game progressed. When confronted by Mewtwo Y, a specific strategy emerged, allowing Mewtwo Y to expend its moveset first, followed by a precisely timed close combat. This approach often resulted in a swift defeat for Mewtwo Y. In cases where victory proved elusive, the dynamic punch combined with an eject button maneuver allowed us to close the gap swiftly and position ourselves for a successful takedown. Closer proximity equated to more straightforward eliminations, a principle that held true throughout the game. As the game advanced and level 9 was attained, granting access to Machamp's Unite move, the stage was set for a game-changing impact during team fights. Success at this stage hinged on patience, waiting for opponents to make errors that we could capitalize on. In particular, Opponents needed to remain closely grouped, especially in the late game, for Machamp to unleash its full potential. This patience bore fruit as opponents' missteps led to their downfall, ultimately securing our victory. In cases where the enemy team failed to stick together, Machamp's Unite move served as a valuable buff, enhancing both damage output and movement speed. As opponent's health dwindled or the Unite move neared its limit, the Barrage attack delivered the final blow. It's important to underscore that a single well-executed Unite move can dramatically alter the course of a game when wielding Machamp correctly. The sheer versatility of this Pokémon, when harnessed with skill, underscores its status as a formidable force on the battlefield. In conclusion, this game exemplifies Machamp's potential as a game-changer a Pokémon capable of delivering unmatched dominance in the late game. Through astute laning, strategic decision-making, and impeccable ability timing, Machamp showcased its prowess as an unstoppable force, ultimately securing a triumphant victory. Fellow gamers, take note, and remember that a well-played Machamp has the potential to redefine the outcome of battles in Pokémon Unite. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more video content, bros. Our goal is to reach 1,200 subscribers. Let's do this to help our future Pokemon Unite gamers. Thank you, bros, and stay hydrated as always.